So I've had this Apple IIc in my garage for years. I don't remember where I got it. I do know that I didn't get a power supply with it. Uh, some kind of rubber foot stuck on there. I don't know why that, how that came. Uh, appears to be a couple of screws missing from the bottom. Uh, even though I did not get a power supply with it, I ordered one on eBay. This is an aftermarket modern power supply. But before I turn it on, I want to open it up and do a quick checkout on it, make sure everything looks okay. So I'm going to take the screwdrivers to the bottom and uh, lift off the lid and see what's inside. I'm making the assumption that these four screws here don't need to come out to take the case apart. There's some boogering right here, so it looks like somebody's been in there trying to pry it open before. Let's see what... Yep. And there we go. Ew. It's kind of dirty. I'm going to wash that. And... Uh, what else? Keyboard, speaker, these screws over there for safekeeping. Lift up the floppy drive. Belt looks good on the floppy. Motherboard. Electrolytics look okay. Power supply here. I don't know of any way to test it out of circuit, so I don't see any obvious damage. I'm gonna go ahead and snap it back together and uh, try and turn it on. I've got the composite video connector plugged in. We got the monitor there, and we're going to go ahead and do the smoke test. Check this drive. I'm going to have the disc that came with it. Let's pop it in there. It did not want to boot, so I'm taking the drive apart for cleaning. And dry it off with the other end. The pad looks fine. Visually, I don't see a problem. See if cleaning the head made a difference. Well, the head stepper is gone. Yeah, we got something. This is the intro disc that came with the Apple IIc originally. I've got the IIc fully disassembled. I'm going to try to clean it up here. It's pretty dirty. You can see the color difference between the top and the bottom of the case. I'm going to make an attempt to retrofit this. There is some kind of a fabric mesh over the uh, ventilation slots. It's got some nasty stuff in it, so hopefully that's going to be tolerant of a wash. And I also took off the floppy disk faceplate so that I can uh, wash that and Try to retrobite that as well. I'm going to take the keyboard apart and get that cleaned. Uh, a regular wire key puller is probably not going to work on here, but I got the idea that I could probably use this chip puller. Some of the keys will come off pretty easy. Take a photo of the keyboard before you start pulling it apart. You can take the uh, chip puller and just kind of slide it in from one side and pull straight up. 
So based on these keys here, I can tell clearly this key's broken. I've got a keycap on order, but it's not going to snap in there, so I'll have to find some way to get it to stay. I'm speeding up the video here so you don't have to watch me remove all of the keys. That rubber mat under the keycaps just disintegrated. Just throw that away. I'm having trouble getting this space bar off. I think somebody super glued this space bar onto this key switch. I cannot get it off, so I'm going to have to try and desolder the key switch. These are pretty easy to desolder. There's a couple of large ground lugs in addition to the electrical contacts. I'm going to get the key switch off. I can try to get the space bar off without breaking the key switch. So I did get the space bar separated, but in order to keep from breaking it, I ended up goobering it up by holding onto it with a pair of hemostats and I screwed up the plastic so now it doesn't push in and out smoothly. So I'm going to have to clean that up and put the switch back together. Well, I sanded down the distortions I made in the plastic along the edge. I had to squeeze this thing so hard with these hemostats that it screwed up the plastic here along this edge and then the switch wouldn't transition across this spring, this spring here. So now it's moving like it should. So I should be able to just put the switch back together. That seems to work just fine. This thing was definitely super glued because it took a lot of effort to pull it apart. I had to put that back together. I put all the keycaps in a bowl of warm soapy water. Scrub them all one at a time with an old toothbrush. Rinse. And leave them out to dry. I was doing some research on the color of the, the original color of these keys. Uh, looking at the back side of the keys, assuming the back sides didn't get any UV light, that should be the original color of the plastic. And as far as I can tell, these keys haven't changed color at all. The back side of the space bar is interesting. But I think the space bar must have always been a different color from the rest of the keys. But the front of it is definitely yellowed. I do plan to retrobite the space bar until it matches this color. But I'm not going to retrobite any of the keys because I think they're the color they're supposed to be. I've got a minor problem and a possible creative solution. My 2C keyboard was missing the caps lock key. Well, I ordered one online, and apart from the fact that the key I got is a slightly different color, I noticed this. The stem is broken. So I can put the key on there, but there's a good chance it'll fall off. And... Uh, I don't want to glue it on there because I want to be able to take it off. So I got this idea. These keys right here snap on and these are the same key switches. Push down, push up, push down, push up. So these buttons are captured. If this does come loose, there's no way it's going to fall out. So what I think I'm going to do is desolder this uh, key switch here and swap these. And the caps lock key will have a proper snap down and this will be in place but it won't be able to come up far enough to come loose. 
50 second rapid soldering montage. The ground lugs on these key switches spring outward to snap them in place and hold them. Now we have a good caps lock key and a slightly damaged but insignificant damage to the uh, keyboard key. Time to retrobrite the case plastic. I'm using a gallon of 12% solution in a clear plastic tub. Adding a gallon of water to cover the pieces, this will dilute the solution to 6%. Covering the tub with cling wrap to uh, prevent evaporation and contain the gases. Yeah, I know I'm going to need some more water to uh, completely cover the pieces. I'll add that in a minute. Adding another gallon of water should dilute the solution to 4%. And I'll put some tape on here to keep the wind from blowing the cling wrap off. Been out here for four hours now. Time to check to see if they're done. It's still fizzy. That looks pretty white. It's definitely been a change bright sunlight here, it's hard to tell. Just take a minute and rinse them off. Taking a close look in the power supply for the 2C, everything looks pretty good. I don't see any swollen capacitors, no leaks, no corrosion. So this looks just fine to me. This big black component here is labeled R5, so that's a resistor. And it's wrapped in heat shrink tubing for some reason. This turns out it's not a capacitor actually, this is an inductor, this is labeled L5. Not much can go wrong with inductors. And this discoloration on the plastic is only where it's contacting this heat shrink tubing. 
So I think the discoloration is just a result of the heat shrink tubing getting hot. And uh, there's actually not anything wrong with the component. Lid is press fit together, and it's actually really difficult to get apart without bending it. There's a crease there. Here's what it looked like before, and here's what it looks like now. That looks a lot better. The caps lock key is a little bit off on the color, but other than that, I'm quite happy with the results. I'm very happy with the results of the retrobriting process. That's it. Sorry about the crappy camera work and sound. I'll try to do better next time. Thanks for watching.